Now, a number of people like Anne Lacey are remembering uh, their favourite Mark Kermode moment and her favourite is uh, when you stormed out of the Palace of Glittering Delights, much to the amusement of Mark and Lard. That is true. And why did you storm out? Because they had been toilet thing just so far and I said, <laughs> if you carry on doing this, I'll leave and they went, yeah, right, so I did. Okay, it puts you alongside the uh, John Knott interview when he was Defence Secretary and he stormed out of a Robin Day interview on BBC. Mm. Uh, Grant Kempster says, uh, I know that Mark will be missed by all because over the years you come to know a critic's tastes <laughs> and you're able to use them as a yardstick to make your own judgments by. Okay? He says, three years ago I was a graphic designer, now on Friday mornings, who knows where I'd be now. Now we have the more than capable James King to guide us on our cinematic way. So that's James King, more than capable. <laughs> You're so kind, Grant. You're just too kind. I'd like to think of him as maybe an Obi-Wan to Mark's Kegon Jin, or maybe a Father Karras to Mark's Father Merrin, if you like. <laughs> I think that's, that's a comparison I can easily live with. Who could have a better teacher than the great Kermo? There you go, that's from Grant Kempster. And uh, another still to come. Okay, so uh, top ten, this is Mark. Enjoy it while it's here, because uh, next week it's just James. Get them while they're hot. Okay, number ten, being John Malkovich. Fabulous. I like it. It's, why is it only number ten? Because it's only on in a few places, but it will go bigger later. I've okay. had a number of people saying, why can't we see it? You know, it's number one in London, but the rest of the country aren't getting it yet, but it will get there eventually. Why, well, why, why should they have to wait? It's pathetic. I know. I, I don't make the rules. Simon Mayo. Okay. You aren't you are more than capable, James. Yes. Uh, nine is Cider House Rules. Which is alright. Michael Caine's accent isn't great. Eight is The Beach. It's alright. It's okay. So The Beach is doing better than Cider House Rules? No, but it's not. playing in more cinemas probably, isn't there it? There you go. You only need to look at screen average. Oh, okay, that's true. Okay. okay. Come on, get it together. I can't be bothered. Um, Seven is A Clockwork Orange. Oh, it's very good. It's still six, great. Six is Talented Mr. Ripley. Yeah, um, well, yeah it's alright. I like it more than he does. New entry at number five is The Fabulous Magnolia. It's very good. It's just a work of art. Four is Three Kings. Which is good. Starts well, goes downhill. Three is The Green Mile. Oh, which I like more. Goes really downhill. Two is American Beauty. Uh, fabulous. Very, very good. Although people are now saying, I went to that American Beauty and it wasn't as good as everyone came. That's, that's because saying American, American Beauty is good is sort of like rather boring. I know, so yeah. That's what I'm saying. Oh, it was rubbish. And that was still great. at number one, Toy Story 2. Hey! Unbelievably. Unbelievably still at the top. So go see one of those or try something else. Any Given Sunday is the new movie by Oliver Stone, okay? And it's a film about American football, but like all Oliver Stone movies, it's turned the American football pitch into an absolute battle zone. Story is Al Pacino is this old-style sports coach who is battling against the media, television, the influence of money, the influence of pop videos, all that sort of stuff, to try and make it into a decent sport and get the whole team to pull together. Like all Oliver Stone movies, I've said this before, I'll say it again, it is like being yelled at for two and a half hours. However, in this context, the being yelled at seems to work rather well. Albert, he's your mate, that's he's, why. That's right, he's my friend. You gave him an award. I didn't give him an award. I mean, I physically, I physically gave it to him. And he's just been announced as the new director of Superman. Is that right? That's true. Well, there you go. Humpty 2. <laughs> Can I move on? Yeah, go on. Al Pacino is very good and he has very nice teeth in the poster. Like all Oliver Stone's films, however, the female roles are sorely underwritten, either from Cameron Diaz being this kind of archetypal, bitchy, you know, uh, person who runs a club, to the Anne Margaret role, which just sort of comes up and is a little bit sold and goes away. So it's very manly, it's very locker room, it's very guys together and all that sort of stuff. If you like that kind of thing, it's fine. However, if what you're looking for is a sense of drama that appeals to the feminine side of your personality, forget it. It is like spending two and a half hours in a locker room, which I'm happy with, but may not be for everyone. In fact, you do do that on a regular basis, don't you, Mark? Right. Boom. And if you will, that's actually why we had to sack him. I know. Anyway. You know, Oliver Stone in all the interviews has been going on about how uh, American football players are like the new kind of gladiators of old. I think that's really apt because I found watching this about as entertaining as watching gladiators He's on good. Telly. He's good. Can it's I just so boring. boring. He's wrong. It's so boring. It's not boring. Is it very impenetrable? If, like, obviously in America they know all the rules and stuff. If you don't know no. the rules... In England, yes, interesting. It no, no, it's not. In England they've cut out 12 minutes of football footage in, in order to make it slightly... In the United Kingdom, they've cut out 12 minutes of football footage. Thank you for the fact that I never got that right, even after nine years. Thank you. Um, but I thought that, 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 I mean, that footage is, you don't have to understand. It's a bunch of guys, a ball, one team of guys running one way, other team of guys running the other way. It's like, guys, not that hard to follow. Sound like my wife. Okay, go on. I've seen it before. It was called The Mighty Ducks. Um, Mansfield that's Park. You, that's that is just, that's, that's cheap, true. Cheap and below the Mansfield belt. Mansfield Park is uh, an adaptation of the Jane Austen novel. You get Frances O'Connor playing uh, Fanny Price. You know, she goes to stay with her rich relatives at Mansfield Park. She gets taken in by the glamour falls in love suffice to say a bucket load of repressed emotion ensues it's billed as this kind of fresh and sexy look at the story you know you get johnny lee miller there's a bit of eye candy blah 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 
I don't know. Maybe I've just spent my time watching uh, movies on Channel 5 on a Friday night. <laughs> I didn't find it that sexy or refreshing. I, I watched the new Cindy Crawford exercise video yesterday. That's sexier than Mansfield Park. There is an element of it which is kind of, you know, a bit postmodern. You've got we're, too much time on your We're hand, talking yeah. to the camera, you know, it's being all a bit knowing. It just gets a bit annoying. I want it to be one thing or the other. You know, be straight and sensible. Be the BBC One adaptation. Or be really saucy and new and modern. It's kind of in between. It's nothing much. If I can just raise the tone from the Cindy Crawford videos, Harold Pinter's in it and he's actually very good. And it's an adaptation which takes in that novel and also some of her letters and also some other novels. So it will mess up A-level students. But it is true that I don't remember in the original novel there being scenes in which women dress each other in quite that lingering way. Oh, really? Also out this note, also out this week, and a classic adaptation, Love's Labour's Lost, new movie from Kenneth Brown. Okay, here's the most brilliant thing. You take a Shakespeare play, you know Shakespeare, long, da dum 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 for three hours. You take half the text out, you put in a bunch of songs and dancing. It's just fabulous. It's a musical version of Love's Labour's Lost. It's obviously inspired by going to see Everyone Says I Love You, the Woody Allen film, in which a bunch of actors, some of whom can sing, some of whom can't, some of whom can dance, some of whom can't, all sing and dance anyway. It's really, really enjoyable. There is, there is some really nice fleet-footed work in it, but the best thing about it is seeing a bunch of people who are just exuberant and trying, regardless of whether or not they are the most fabulous dance in the world. It was 90 minutes long, which is how long a Shakespeare play ought to be. The tunes are really great. It's moving. It's sweet. It looks delicious. And I can't believe you used the phrase eye candy in that review that you yeah, just I did. Yeah, I did notice eye candy. Can I just say Alicia Silverstone yeah. is uh, on the show next week? And she's very, very good in this. She is. Anything else? Yes. Uh, yeah, Holy, more. Holy Smoke. Uh, you know, I was listening to your Kate Winslet interview yesterday, yeah. Simon, and it kind of, what you said to me about Holy yeah. Smoke. Yeah, don't give me a hard time about Oliver Stone and do that nonsense. I know. You said me, you yeah, said to me, uh, you, can, you know, in the office a couple of weeks ago, I think it was something like the biggest pile of something I've ever seen, or uh, words to that effect. You were very nice and to what, Kate, though. You didn't what, mention that to Kate, did What you? did I also say about Kate Winslet's performance Kate, to you? Kate Winslet is very good, I admit that. And what did I say to Kate? I said, Kate, I think you're really good in it. It was just... Which was true. It was selected truth, though, wasn't it? It was... If she'd asked me, what do you think of the whole film, I would have said... Not much, Kate. But she didn't. And I was truthfully able to say, I think you're very good in it. She is very good. Harvey Keitel, on the other hand... Uh, well, he wears a red dress and I can't cope with that, really. Kate goes to India. She falls in love with the guru. Parents get freaked out go to rescue her. She's back in Australia and she's still a bit kind of, you know, a bit nutty. She just isn't the same. So they get Harvey Keitel, who is this counsellor who comes and helps people kind of get back to normal if they've been taken in by cults, to get her mind sorted out. Only trouble is, Harvey does that, but then falls in love with her and, as you so rightly mentioned, ends up, and I'm still not quite sure exactly why, in a red dress uh, with makeup and, and red lipstick. Yeah. Jane Campion directed it. She did the piano. It's not that film. If you're looking for the piano, it's better than the piano. It's, it's better than the piano. If you're looking for the piano, I'm sorry. Party, you know, it, don't even start, George. Yeah, it's better than the piano. Piano, piano was terrible. I'm sorry. Da, 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 da. Oh, I'm going to tie myself. Da, da, da. Boring, 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 boring. Rather have Harvey in a dress. Well, you're wrong. Well, that's the point. It's meant you to be so far. It's meant to be stupid. It's meant to be kitsch, and it is funny. And you know, if you take it like that, then you'll enjoy it. Yes, there are flaws aplenty, but I kind of like those flaws. You know, it works. Fine. I know. Okay, and just finally, the other thing out this week, Lake Placid, here's the story. It's a big budget B movie featuring, it's got blood, it's got gore, it's got helicopters, it's got a gigantic crocodile. It is 90 minutes long. Bridget Fonda and Bill Pullman running around as a, a paleontologist and a gamekeeper. Big lake, big crocodile, crocodile bites people into loads of ridiculously explicit kind of special effects, and then, you know, big crocodile, rum, 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 helicopter, rum, rum, laughed all the way through it. Thoroughly enjoyed myself. Good popcorn movie. That, it's, it's like Tremors, that Ron Underwood movie, Tremors, which is about giant earthworms. It has the same wit as the John Sayles script for Piranha Flying Killers. It's, it's, you know, it was funny and I enjoyed it. So, in fact, Movies of the Week, any given Sunday if you like sports, Lake Placid if you like crocodiles, and Love's Labour's Lost if you like singing and dancing. It's something for everybody. It is. Excellent. Thank you very much, guys. The UK's official number one.